October 7th. I am. Um, I've been trying to get out of bed. But I got triggered. One of the songs that came up triggered me. And then I realized. I realized that I never really. I, I, I never really talked about this affair. The one in particular. And, and that song triggered it for me. I've been thinking about him all morning. And the thing is, I have talked about him. That's what I realized too afterwards. I was like, oh, I haven't talked about him. But I have. I, I have actually. He was the first person that I talked about a year ago. He was the first person I talked about. The pain that I was feeling was from him. My connection with him. The emotional pain. I remember um, I remember when we first connected uh, I reached out actually but it wasn't for that purpose I was trying to figure out what was wrong in my marriage so I couldn't get the answers from him I looked outside. Like when I would bring it up in my marriage, I, I, would, I would get nothing. Silent. And I didn't know. I was very much into, I need to fix this, I need to fix this. I just need to know what's wrong so I can fix it. And I mentioned that I have more male friends. I just get along better with men. <laughs> and, um, so I reached out to one of them. Asked, what am I doing wrong? And coincidentally, he was going through something similar. And so we vented. That's how it started off. We were just venting. And then we started talking about what we both wanted. And it was very similar. What we wanted. That's how it started. Just venting. to another. And I remember when when we first talked about possibly crossing over that step. That boundary. I told him I had to think about it. And then I said we need to have rules. <laughs> we need to have rules. We're going to be completely honest with each other. Doesn't matter what it was, we're going to be honest. And nothing was going to change in our relationships. We weren't, we, we weren't, nothing was going to change. We had to keep everything the same.
I know there were more rules, but those are the only ones I can remember right now. He has a nice voice. I like his voice. I told him he should be on a radio. Because he has a really good voice. And there's so much enthusiasm when he speaks about his passion. I was, I was really, I remember being really surprised at one point when, when we were, because it was mostly through text and then in person. But then at one point it shifted where we were actually having more phone conversations. And I remember telling him, you have a really nice voice over the phone, like it just, and I remember saying, like, and just to hear you speak about your passion, like, I'm like, you would be really good at doing, but, and I would sell it. he's like, no, I'm not good at it. And I remember what I loved about our interactions was that, that we were able to vent. We were able to talk. That's what I appreciated. And then we were able to talk to each other. I didn't feel like I was just talking to myself. And we were both creative. In the bedroom, we were both, every time was different, every single We kept it interesting. We did our research. We found out how to stimulate each other. <laughs> but then of course the guilt, right? The social norms, religious views. I'd step in and I'd pull away. It was mostly me who was pulling. He told me, he's just like, I, I will never stop. He's, unless you pull away. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> but the guilt, I felt it. I wouldn't show it. I would, I would feel guilt and I'd pull away. But I'd, we'd always find ourselves back. It was on and off. And someone once asked me, how would it be started? And I was like, just simple text. Hey, how you doing? And then I'd be honest. I remember, I remember it started to bother me when he would leave, I didn't want him to leave. I remember I didn't want him to leave. He had a family. He had responsibilities, but I just, I hate it. I hate it every time I did. But I wouldn't say anything. I'd bottle it up. I'd pretend I was okay, but I think he I mean, I, I remember her little things bothered me. And I remember he's like, don't do that. I remember we agreed we'd be honest. Okay. Like, I was with him that we had our tough talk. Or after we'd do what we do, we'd take a shower together, and then we would just sit in the tub, in the 
There is this vulnerability. Every feeling of vulnerability is physically vulnerable and emotionally vulnerable. Really just talk. But then you know, or I hated that feeling every time. It was like this pain in my heart, abandoned feeling. I felt abandoned. I felt abandoned. And I remember the first time I felt jealousy. I'd never felt jealousy before. I didn't know what that feeling was. And I remember, I remember. I remember where I was when I felt it. I was in the shower and I'm like, what is this? What is this? What is this feeling? I remember thinking to myself, what is this burning sensation inside with anger? And then I, I realized what it was. It was this jealousy. I'd never felt jealous before. And I, I was jealous. I never felt just like, not like that, not like that, because I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I remember just crying, being angry, <laughs> because it would go on with someone else. And then I remember trying to shake it off, like, no, oh, no, don't feel emotion, don't feel emotion. I was angry. And I was even more angry. Because she never saw him. She didn't see him. She didn't see him. <laughs> that made me more angry. And she didn't see him either. And I'm like, how do you not see him? How do you not see him? I see him. How do you not see him? He wasn't seen. He was a reflection of me. And he wasn't being seen. I was so angry at her. And I knew her. I tried I tried to get her to see him. I really did. I really tried. And then I pulled away. I was like, I'm not gonna get mom. But I tried to get her to see him. Thinking if I get her to see him then we'll stop. He won't need me anymore. And I had pulled away enough to know that I would be more. That it bothered me that she didn't see him because she was worried about what everyone else would do and had other expectations. She never heard him. And then I got angry at him for not speaking up. But I loved him. I did. Very much. That whole beginning chapter is about him. And, and the love, like, I just I couldn't let it go. It got emotional. We even talked about what would it be like if we lived together and we were actually planning to get away for a week or a set of week or a few days to live together to see how that would be for us. That's how, that's how close it was getting to being 
I mean, it, for me, it was already emotional from the, be from the beginning. But he was opening up. And that's when we started triggering. Because then all this happened. <laughs> and he, he wanted me to wait. <laughs> he wanted me to wait two years. Like, really? Really? I don't think he thought I was ever going to leave my marriage. I think he was shocked that I, that I finally spoke. But by then, all that stuff was happening to me, and the energetic stuff, and, and I, 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 and as much as we were vulnerable before, for whatever reason, I, I couldn't be vulnerable when all of this was happening, I, I couldn't speak up, it was the weirdest, it was like, like I was able to be vulnerable, and then when all this happened, it shifted, where I, I couldn't even talk, I couldn't even see him. And he was, I remember, he was just like, what's going on? What's going on with you? I remember him saying. He's like, why can't you talk to me? I was like, I don't know. And I had a right to tell. I had a right what I wanted to share with him. And I, and I even had to tell him, like, just don't look at me, don't look at me. Don't look at me as I'm talking to you. That was different than how we interacted before. And he couldn't get it. He's like, and he was trying to go with the flow with me. He's just like, I don't know what's going on. He's like, what's wrong? And I just, I didn't know how to explain it to him. I didn't, well, because I didn't know what was happening at that time either. <laughs> I triggered him. We triggered each other. And there was a side of him that I'd never seen before. He snapped at me. He'd never done that. raised his voice and I remember being like <gasps> but it was out of fear the first time and the second time it was another side of my hand scene and I was just like okay I just need to step away That's what I was thinking about this morning. <laughs> Just remembering. Remembering that. I forgot. It was a year ago. When I was struggling to let him go. I was struggling. Really struggling. And it was so much pain. I remember there was so much pain. Physical pain. I mean, I was feeling so much physical pain. I remember it was here and then right through the back, right? It was like a piercing pain. And then I remember my, my spine. Like, I, I remember one of the videos where I, I'm like, I don't know what's happening, but I feel like my body is wanting to cramp up. Like, like, literally, like, it was burning and it was just wanting to cramp up. And now that I'm thinking about it in retrospect, I think that was, like, probably one of those, what did you call it? Like, a, I have to look, a kundalini awakening or something? 
which is different than a spiritual awakening. Because it could not be that she said, I have to look, I, I'm gonna look for that video and I'll include it. But it was something where she described, like, the, it was for physical pain, where, where, when she experienced it, she described it where it felt like her back was breaking in half. Mine didn't feel like it was breaking in half. I just felt like it was like, like contorting, like, like I, I, I couldn't, like at any point I was going to get spasms and my whole, but it was throughout my whole body, physical body. And I was so afraid to drive because I, I couldn't even, like I, I, I had no control. And I just, I remember the pain and that's when I called my friend to come from LA and I'm like, something's happening, this is different, this is different, I don't know what's happening, I can't move. I had a cut off work and I'm like take me take me to Chan which is my massage therapist my acupuncturist and I'm like take me to him take me to him so he drove me made an appointment and he saw me and I'm like freaking out I'm like Chan I don't know what's happening he's like it's all in your head and he's trying to calm me down but I just remember it it, it was just so all over physical pain where I was like contorting almost like I was and I had to lay down because I was like I don't know what's happening I don't know what's happening but that's what that was that's what she said it would be and then with that light worker video that came out was it that one where she said that once the spiritual awakening goes on what did she say that that I go I go through that process quickly like more a lot more quick quickly a lot more quickly than others because uh what did she say i forgot what type of light worker it was maybe it was one of those where she's talking about the light worker and then she's like once once one of them or or, or maybe just the light worker once they're awakened like they go through the, the stages quicker it's just, you, you go through it quicker. I wonder if that's what that was. Anyways. <sighs> that's what I've been stuck thinking about this morning. Just reflecting. Reflecting on that. A year ago, really. This is how, this is how it all started. And that story a year ago was about him. But that's what was being triggered today, this morning being brought full circle, full circle, I'm close to the end, I'm close to the end of this healing, <laughs> yeah, okay, that's all, I gotta get ready, okay, bye, hi, my name is Yubi, and in case you haven't figured it out, this footage is capturing my experience as I learned to navigate my personal spiritual awakening. Um, I am learning that this experience is unique to each one of us. Um, in whatever way we believe we are embracing living our truth, this just happens to be my journey. Um, and despite me having a graduate degree and a license in clinical social work, this by no means is intended to replace any type of mental health advice. This is just me on a personal level, uh, documenting my experience, shedding light on the truth that I am learning and discovering for myself, um, and really inviting you along for the ride. Um, if by some <laughs> magical chance you find this content to be helpful in any way, shape, or form, please click the like button, you know, share the message, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have an Instagram account, a personal one, and one specifically for this channel that you're more than welcome to check out. Um, I'm an open book. Um, 
I have also created t-shirt um, t-shirt designs I'm wearing my favorite one right now which is the North Node um, uh, design um, but I have that and other things uh, that you can look at um, inspired by this process and journey um, and I have the link in the description box as well as in the about section of my YouTube um, channel so you're more than welcome to check those items out um, any type of support is you know, right? <laughs> um, again, if, if you find this content really helpful or meaningful, sometimes when we um, take that step and, and, and be vulnerable, you know, with, with showing what's inside our hearts and what's really our truth, we realize that we're much more connected um, than, than what we thought we were. And so um, I hope that um, as I'm living this experience it, and that you find some type of truth for yourself or find some type of um, ability to heal in some way just by relating, you know, just just by knowing that you're not alone. That really has been my goal with, with this process, um, not just um, being able to connect with others, but really for my own healing. Um, it's definitely been a therapeutic experience and a very creative one for, for myself. So I thank you and